Most things in life are simply made better with the addition of others, and making music is no exception. In the nine to 10 years that I have been writing my own stuff and putting myself out there, I have been extremely fortunate to meet some truly amazing people along the way. And these are both people who also make their own music and those that don't. And sure, there are pretty obvious reasons as to why making friends is a really good idea, like just having people to share your stuff with, but today, I'd like to go over three reasons you may or may not have thought of as to why making friends in this space can be so helpful. Think of it like a secret sauce of sorts that will help you grow not only as a musician, but also as a person. Let's do this. Welcome back to Three Strings Music, where we celebrate growth together, both in music and in life. My name is Clayton Roberts, though most people just call me Dewey. I'm glad to have you here today. Friendship truly is magic. It is something that has always been a great driver as to why I keep doing this. And if you also have friends that you'd like to share this stuff with, awesome. It's a great motivator, and I love it. And your friends can really help you out if you're just getting started. So allow me to help you out a little bit further if you're just getting started. I'd like to introduce you to a free guide I put together called the 30 Minute Music Basics. It's a PDF guide that has bullet points, definitions, pictures that you can always use as reference for level one music terms that you can use to get started in this space. And like I said, it is completely free as my gift to you. All you have to do is just go to threestringsmusic.com slash basics to pick it up. Again, that's the number three, stringsmusic.com slash basics. So yeah, there are many ways that this can take form. Call it networking, call it marketing yourself, call it just finding people to jam with. Those are all great. But I would like to share with you three reasons that I think it's incredibly beneficial and that are very near and dear to me. And they may help you think about the stuff in a way that you may not have already. I love this first point just because it's really good for your mental health in general. Reason number one, having these kind of meaningful discussions with people who get it can be incredibly therapeutic. It can also reinforce why you're doing this in the first place. This could be just a me thing, but one of the things I have learned about myself is that the way I make a lot of my friends is by having really long walk and talks or drive and talks with them about just random stuff, but obviously music tends to come up a lot. It doesn't really matter where we are. I've had plenty of instances in the past where like we'll have a big group outing with a lot of people and a lot of friends and we'll all go grab dinner or something. And there will be someone at that gathering that I haven't really talked to much in the past. And I usually end up being one of the last people to leave just because I like socializing with these people. But sometimes myself and this other person will be the last one left and we'll just walk around wherever we are, like the shopping center, just wherever, and we'll just start randomly talking about stuff. And if that's something that we can keep going for just an hour plus, I can tell that this is a sign that this is someone who I can definitely get along with. If we can't do that, that doesn't mean I won't get along with them. It's just something that I've taken to noticing and I'm like, ooh, I really like this. And I've done this too with drive-in talks where someone will either be in my passenger seat or we'll just call on the phone. I do this with all sorts of people. Friends that I just recently made, friends that have been with me for a long time, it doesn't matter. But it is so rewarding and so fulfilling whenever I am able to just naturally have these kind of conversations with people. And if it's someone who I'm doing it with for the first time, I can tell, ooh, this is really good connection. We could really become friends and just do it more. It's really just basic human connection. It's something we all understand. As an example of this outside of music, those who know me know that I am a massive sports ball fan. If it is a team sport with a ball or a puck, I'm all in on it. Football, baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, you name it. I love that stuff. One of the things I love to geek out is about the history of the Super Bowl. And I have certain friends who love that stuff too, and we can just talk about it forever and ever and ever, and never ever run out of things to say. Usually the conversation ends with, okay, it's really, really late, I could keep going, but we should get some sleep. And to me, that's a really good sign that you have someone you can really connect with. To give a more music-focused example, when I travel to these conventions inside and outside of Texas, I love to do panels of all sorts with people throughout the duration of the weekend. One of my absolute favorite panels that I do with a friend of mine is called Writing Horse Music. I run this panel with a dear friend of mine who goes by Luck Rock, and I hope to get him on this channel every now and then in the future. 
But we run this panel together and basically just walk people through our songwriting process, especially with themes that are inspired by, you know, the My Little Pony show that we all are there for. We take questions, we provide examples, we just talk about things in the world of music, and we just keep going. They usually give us about an hour or sometimes an hour and a half to do these panels, and one of the reasons why I know this is such a successful panel for us is because when our 60 to 90 minutes are up, and we need to wrap the panel up so the next panelist can come in, we always walk away from it knowing, man, we could have talked for like another three to four hours easily. And you know what? We absolutely could. It's a topic neither one of us can shut up about. And if you're able to walk away from conversations, regardless of if they are about music or not about music, and you walk away from that thinking to yourself, oh man, we could have kept going for hours if there wasn't some kind of time restraint then you know that's somebody you definitely have a connection with. The second point I wanna to touch on, reason number two, everyone is a potential collaborator. There's a guy on YouTube that I really, really like named Graham Cochran, who gives really good advice both on music as well as just business. And he has this little mantra that I love, basically saying that don't look at people as competition, Look at everyone as potential collaborators. And you know what? I completely agree. I love this mindset because when you look at other musicians, especially those in similar genres as you, when you look at it as everyone is competition, things can get really, really ugly and really messy very quickly. But that's why I urge you to look at everyone not as competitors, but potential collaborators that you can work with in the future. And I'm not saying go out there and try and collaborate with every single person under the sun. The very idea of that just sounds exhausting. But certainly be open to it and don't look at them as, oh, this person's coming for me or I'm coming for them. And if you do start reaching out to people to collaborate with, just remember that not everybody is going to want to collaborate with you. Just remember to not take it personally. Maybe they're busy. Maybe they just think it's not a good fit. Maybe they think of you as competition, and if they think of you as competition, well, there isn't really a whole lot you can do about that, so the best thing you can do is just say, all right, well, have a nice day, and just leave the door open. At the end of the day, I'm here to make the music that I enjoy, and I also am here to show you how you can make the music that you enjoy, not here to how to take down the competition. And I avoid that by thinking of everyone as a potential collaborator. I'm not gonna reach out to every single person, and they're not gonna reach out to me, but I'm always open to the opportunity. The wonderful thing about music is that you can choose both. There's nothing that says that people are only allowed to listen to your music or your competitor's music. There are people out there who will happily listen to both. There are people out there who are both Megadeth and Iron Maiden fans, just like there are people out there who are both Star Wars and Star Trek fans. There's never any rule that says you have to pick one or the other. It's also just great to have this as like a literal, I know a guy scene in real life. For example, if you're working on a song and you need someone to play piano for you, and you happen to know somebody who is really, really good at piano and loves to play with you, you can have a, <laughs> I know a guy. And of course, there's nothing that says that you can't be their guy or gal that they go, I know a guy or gal. Like, for example, I play a lot of guitar, and if a friend of mine has like, hey, I need a guitarist, they can look at me for that. I'm going to talk about it a little more later in this video, but yes, we have many instances where I will play for somebody else, and they will play for me. That happens all the time in my space. The third point I wanted to touch on with this is something that I've briefly talked about earlier in this video, but... Really, it's a matter of having a second set of ears to listen to your stuff. Well, not impossible, it is very difficult to create music in perfect isolation or in a vacuum where you just don't talk to anybody. And honestly, that's something I just don't recommend doing anyways. I understand that there may be a sort of romanticism with the idea of, like, locking yourself away and just cutting it off while you work in secret on a new song or whatever. If you've ever seen the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, it's like that scene in the beginning where Charlie is like looking across the gate at Wonka's Chocolate Factory at night and it's completely locked up and the guy comes up behind him and gives him that little nobody ever goes in, nobody ever goes out kind of speech. 
I think that sometimes we like to romanticize something like that and put ourselves in a similar position of like, nobody is going to know anything about this until it's released and then everyone's hearing it for the first time and it's awesome. And yes, while that is possible, I think you're doing yourself a bit of a disservice by not getting a second opinion on it as you're working on stuff. And I'm not saying you have to share your work in progress with everybody, of course not. But there's no harm in letting a small group of people, a couple of people, even just one person in on it. Having one person in the sin works in progress too, like, hey, here's how the song is coming along. What do you think? What do you like? What do you don't like? Does it sound good? Are there distractions? Etc. Because the truth is, it is very common for us to get so invested in a song and obsess over it that we may miss those minor details because at a point, it's just going to become background noise to us. We've heard the song so many times working on it, and that's where having a second set of ears can be really, really helpful. They may hear something in your song after the first listen or two that you missed after the first dozen or hundreds of times listening to it. And these can look like a lot of things, but to give you some examples of negative feedback I've gotten, I've had examples of someone say something like, oh, this chord sounds a little weird or a little off at this part. Uh, this melody you've got is missing something. This melody is too busy. The balance is way off. You have tracks overpowering the others. Like, I think I've been guilty of having a piano part be way too loud and it starts burying the other instruments so you can't hear them as well. These are all things that they could point out to you that you may have missed. And lastly, as a quick little bonus reason, accountability. I think this one will always be criminally underrated, but having friends that will hold you accountable is a godsend. And what I mean by this is, if you say you're gonna do something, if you say you're working on a song, you can have friends that will hold you to it. And I don't mean this in a rough or aggressive kind of way, like they're pressuring you to finish a song. But there is definitely something to be said about letting some people in on what you're working on and then checking in with you like, hey, how's the song coming along? Are you still working on it? Are you following through? They say things like friends can bring out the best in you. And I think that's an example of that where they are holding you to the standards that you are setting for yourself and making sure that you are following through with it. And that's awesome. And something I want to clarify with these people who are listening to your music and giving feedback on your works in progress, holding you accountable, whatever, whatever they're doing for you, they don't have to be other musicians. They certainly can be, and I do recommend getting a musician or three's input on what you're doing. However, they can just be listeners of music, people who know that you're trying to make your own and are interested in seeing what you have. People in general listen to music, not just other musicians. They can just be lovers of music and wanting to support what you do. They can be, but they don't have to be other musicians. And in case you're worried that I'm saying you can't be a solo artist and you gotta go form a group of some sort, no you don't. Don't forget, I'm a solo artist. Do the Daring Do is not a band name, it's me and the music that I make. No, do whatever you want. This is your journey, your path. But speaking as a solo artist, it's also very rewarding to play with others every now and then. That Luckrock guy I mentioned earlier, he's a solo artist and he writes his own songs all the time. However, because we're such close friends and we like to play together a lot, he and I formed a little group of whenever he and I play together called Loudsdale. We've written a couple of songs together and it's just a little duo group of he and I whenever we like to play together. And not only that, we have performed concerts together as all three. We have done luck rock sets where I play for him. We have done do the daring do sets where he plays for me. And we also do Loudsdale sets where we play for each other, where we will play some of his songs, play some of my songs, and occasionally Loudsdale songs. In fact, speaking of Loudsdale, let me show you a quick clip to prove this point further. Not just Luck and I, everyone in that clip considers themselves a solo artist. Luck Rock and I have our own stuff. The bassist, Melody Brony, writes his own music. The keyboardist, Blue Brony, writes his own music. And so does the drummer who goes by Drummer Shy. Everyone on that stage considers themselves to be a solo artist, but we love coming together to put on shows like this. 
And at least in this community, that is very, very common. I have played shows for people, and they've played shows for me. And yet, I still write my own music for myself, and they write their own music for themselves. You can stay a solo artist that doesn't have to go anywhere. But if you allow yourself to be open to playing with others, be it putting on a show or just jamming, I think that is a very, very rewarding experience, and I heavily recommend it. And so to recap, the three reasons I gave as to why you should be open to making friends in this space are, one, because it can be incredibly therapeutic to just talk this stuff out, two, because everybody is a potential collaborator, and three, because everybody can lend you a second set of ears to listen to your stuff. And the little bonus reason I gave, because they can hold you accountable. And as we wrap up, I'm not saying you need to kick the door down and go start making friends right and left as soon as this video is over. I get it, some people are a bit more introverted than others. That's totally fine. A ton of introverts make music. But I also know that they have their own inner circles and their connections that they're involved in. You can be an introvert and still apply some or all of these things. Ironically, you would actually be in great company in doing so. Just be open to the possibilities of this as you go along. As I have said, I am eternally grateful for the friends that I have made along the way, as well as the friends that I will continue to make along the way. I want these places to be as positive, supportive, and encouraging as possible. And the friends you make can make that so much better. And calling back to what I said earlier, I strongly feel that my friends have improved me not only as a musician, but as a person in general. And I will always be thankful for that. And I am certainly thankful to you for checking this episode out. I hope you got some good stuff out of this and that it got you thinking about the friends you currently have and how you can have these kind of conversations with them. And as you are exploring this more and more, you can still grab the 30 minute music basics guide that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. All you have to do is just go to threestringsmusic.com slash basics to get your free guide. Again, that's the number three stringsmusic.com slash basics. Thank you for joining me on this one. I will see you next week. In the meantime, take care of yourself, have a great day, and friendship is magic.